Hello and welcome. I'm Arno Schmidt and I'm showcasing you some early access XLN standard content here. Big thank you to Wizards of the Coast for providing me with this opportunity to play with the new cards before release. And this time I'm gonna, you know, have some fun with the dinos. We'll see if they are playable enough, if they're strong enough. The new dino archetype certainly got a lot of you to, a lot of tools. It wasn't actually that easy for me to build this deck because there's so many dinos that actually look playable, look decent, that can do something. Um, so yeah, I'm not even sure on some of these slots, but we'll we'll go with this list first and then you know explore as we continue. Um, and yeah, notable, very nice removal here. One mana. Fortunately, unfortunately, not an instant, but hey, this can deal like four or five damage. This could kill a shieldred when you have, you know, Hammer Skull out, when you have the Hulking Raptor out, you get to that precious five or more toughness at power, I mean, and then you kill that uh, shieldred off the board, which is otherwise a huge problem for a deck like this, right? And then we have the Lore Keeper, Mana Elf, one mana, pretty nice. I mean, yeah, sure, only works with dinos, but hey, that's what we're doing here. So if you can get ahead on curve, play a one drop, and then, you know, just, especially when you're on the play already, that's that's just big game. So what I'm seeing is certainly compared to the last Excellent set, there's some hefty, hefty support for dinosaurs in the set that actually might make it playable in Constructed, especially after rotation you know when we've we've <laughs> pushed out some of the more powerful cards the the, the innistrad powerful cards wandering emperors and all 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 those uh this deck might actually be you know be playable who knows but uh for now we'll see the power in early access um we have some nice two drops here the yearling is good paleontologist is very nice gives you graveyard interaction mana ramp and then late game also re recurs your dinosaurs for some mana Pretty nice. We have the first one of Gishad, phenomenal limited card, and you know another, you know either early removal spell or later a bigger removal spell together with a dinosaur. And the one unfortunate thing, it's a legend, which is kind of weird. Um, so it will come up that you know you will play this and have to sacrifice one of them. But hey, you still get the removal out of it, and uh, surely you can also just play it as a two drop. Could be a three off. Doesn't have to be a four off necessarily. Just pointing that out. Skyclay Raptor, you know, just a solid Raptor on free mana, nothing crazy. You could play some other ones on in the slot, like the Tranquil Frillback, for example. Um, yeah, Huatli, uh, yeah, I mean, this is not a dino, but the backside makes dinos, and I just, I think this card is is a threat. If you have this on board, your opponent kind of has to kill it, um, otherwise it just, just flips on five mana and then becomes really brutal where, you know, you get two dinos and then, like, you get another dino in Chapter 3 and then all of them get double strike down the line. Like, this is just a ton of value um, and has to be respected. Hammer skill, you know, three mana, six, six. Are you kidding? This can block instantly and, you know, without any downside. So if you're playing against, like, Mono Red, you drop this and they will look at you and be like, yeah, fun, fun game. Uh, I guess I, I pack it all up. I mean, three mana, six, six stats. The downside is really in a dinosaur deck, non-existent, um, just insane card and pretty excited dropping it on turn two with Lore Keeper. Rampaging Raptor, um, sort of in competition here with the Hulking Raptor. Um, you know, you always want to play the new cards, but I feel like this is just weaker than the Rampaging Raptor. Having a 4-4 Trample Haste Dino that really gets the job done, punches in there, is more powerful, I think, than this Ward. 5-3 that makes mana on the next turn. Um, you know, that card is not bad. I like the War 2 a lot, but I, I'm not a biggest fan of the free toughness here. There's like various cards that have free toughness that cost uh, free power that cost fewer mana than this. So you run into those, like Graveyard Trespasser comes to mind, or Lord Skidder um, in standard right now that C play. So, you know, I'm not, you know, super excited about that. But the War 2 is is definitely good enough and an extra mana can help to uh, get out more stuff. This is sort of the dinosaur lord in a way. All your dinosaurs that aren't the hatcher itself get haste. And then right away on the beginning of combat, it creates a free free with haste, which is 
pretty powerful. Again, it has that 5-3 stat line, so it is kind of weak to, uh, you know, like, an abrade, a shock of the, uh, like, a lightning strike, a damage spell, virtue of persistence. But, hey, uh, you do make some value. And even if they kill the first one, those eggs will be laying around, and you can flip those eggs with you know, further hatches, so they become better in multiples. That's why I'm playing four copies. Of course, we have a deck here that can utilize the Cavern of Souls, and we do have the Rich Line, which is another dinosaur, um, that, you know, just always nice to, to have some manlands that you can punch your opponent with uh, the last few damages, and this one uh, is, is, you know, pretty nice. Um, all in all, you could play some Trample Tricks maybe in this deck, you could play a uh, Witch Stalker Frenzy or whatever. There's various ways you can build this. You can build this a little bigger with uh, bigger dinosaurs. I mean, there's a bunch of dinos that, that, that are playable. Um, I'm just going for this more aggressive approach here, just getting the game over with pretty much with the Raptor and uh, just punching in there. That's uh, going to make, you know, the, the six damage from the Hammer Skull be as... as threatening as possible if you just add up a bunch of damage going yearling into into hammer skull is also just so ridiculous i mean there's potential here yeah. I'm, I'm really seeing a lot of potential all right guys again taking footage from my twitch stream and uh yeah with that being said i hope you enjoy this video wow again I'm starting to think this might actually be a bit better than the raptor because five power is quite quite nice with gisha oh it's not even gisha it's it's the firstborn of Gishad, so it's Gishad's baby. Gishad is the big one, the Naya one. So it's it's Quint. It's Quint. Okay, got it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. No, this Dino's deck is pushed. Damn. Um, but yeah, this could be better because it does kill uh, Shieldred, right? Because it has five power, which is pretty pretty important. And often when you play this, your opponent might be incentivized to play their Shieldred. Because, you know, um, they can't kill it as easily because there's ward. So, thoughts, just thoughts. Ooh, we're playing against uh, a reanimation deck, I guess. Three fold Thunderhawk. And you could also play some monstrous rages, just like just a couple, like two, two to three. That would help a bit in racy matchups. Double green, play my Hatcher, and I could play this, they jump here, take 5, 8, 10, I guess, whatever, I mean, at this point I'm just all in. Like, this is my turn 4 board state, imagine. Turn 4. Better have your sunfall right away. One has depopulate. No. No depopulate is probably lights out. Look at this. Look at this. Minus 27 on turn 5. That's a, that's an output of 47 damage. Through a jump blocker. In any format, for that matter, I guess. Yeah, okay, so for the people watching on YouTube, I made another change. I did, I put this into the deck over, what did I cut? Oh my god. Oh, the 2-2 ramp guy, because I saw this card being played against me, and it was just insane. Um, so yeah, we, we're playing that in Dinos. And his hand is, I think, a mulligan. It's just too reliant on, you know, finding lands. Okay, well, pretty good one. Oh, baby. <laughs> I might, might be playing a mirror match already. In which uh, the fungus cave is probably also insane. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And we can, next turn, if they play Hammer Skull here, we can play this and kill the Hammer Skull. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, you gotta be careful with the auto tapper there. Oh, actually, abilities of dinosaurs as well. 
I wonder if this is an ability of dinosaur. I wonder if this actually pays for that. Maybe it does. Oh my god. I mean, and I wasn't even on the play here. I was not on the play. Like, on the play, you always will be able to do that, but because I have the lower keeper, I was kind of on the play, right? Which, you know, that's just crazy. Oh, and now they can they can triumph and chomp. Jeez. Jesus. I mean, this thing is just a house. In the dino matchup, this is clearly the best card you can have. Dang. What a draw here. Right away, turn 2, 6-6. Six, six. Turn 3, kill your 6-6. Six, six. Turn 4, Hatcher. Now kill my Hatcher. Damn it. Jesus Christ, what's happening here? Another Hatcher. <laughs> oh, this is just too good. All right, all right, all right. Well, I don't have attacks. Because the 6-6 six, six is a wall. Um, and I have another Chomp. Okay. And a paleontologist. Okay, well. Okay, well, I guess we're playing uh, our hand out. And that's that's about it. Damn it, that is insane. Yeah, this dino deck is pushed. I had a nutty draw, but my opponents keep, you know, like a second hammer skull. Uh, and now they play the Dracosaur, which shuts me off completely, because it has first strike. Again, I don't think, I, I'm not playing it, because I think it's just too bad against all the black decks and standard, but, you know, it's the second time that I'm losing to this card now. Because, you know, I guess this metagame is just different, and there's not as many go for the throws running around, so you can actually afford to just play a card that is terrible against go for the throw. Um, or make disappear for that matter. I guess Cavern of Souls, whatever. Yeah, I just I don't have attacks. All right, GG. I think I think we we can pack this one up. Easy. This deck kills very quickly, and it, again we have the Lore Keeper every time. Nice, 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 nice. I mean, Lore Keeper turn one is certainly has been part of our success in the last two matches. So. No, don't kill my lore keeper. Don't do it. Oh, oh. We're fizzling. We're fizzling. It's a fizzle. Too many expensive cards. Get in there, my little Gishad. Okay. Pawn plays very fast. Human token deck. Okay. All right, that was that was important. Um, probably just trade. No, no, no attacking today. <clears throat> what are you doing? Mono white tokens. What are we up to? Convoking? Okay. What new cards? <clears throat> that's what I'm curious about. Okay, that's not a new card. Adeline. Block, block. Well, I'm somewhat happy about this particular outcome. Okay. Now this costs only two mana. The wall has arrived. Is it enough? Or is the last cut of my opponent something like 2 plus 2 to everything? Classification? Oh no, that's pretty good. Pretty good last card to have. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm fine. Maybe I'm fine. They could, they could attack with both frontliners and make one of the knight errands a 6-6. Six, six. Oh. That's no way. No. They're just going to attack for everything now. Yeah. Not the 4-4s, four really. Huh. Okay. 
I don't know if that's so effective. Attacking two tokens for five damage. This this thing is just an incredible defensive creature. I mean, I'll just be able to you know outgrind my opponent now. Evangelist. Okay, yeah, that's 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 a bit dangerous of a card. Um, but just play another hatch, I guess. Should I start attacking with something? So I have eight blockers. They have nine attackers. Could get in with like one of these. Still have seven blockers. They have nine attackers. Should have pretty decent blocks overall. Yeah, I take it. I did expect that. So I think I'm okay here. Just a bad, yeah. So here's the spot where you really would like to have some trample to make that card actually do something. Um, where like a monstrous rage would just be insane, right? Okay. How do we do this? So I attack everybody, maybe, 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 maybe. They they have to do some blocking. They can eat these guys though, which is a bit unfortunate with the four force. So maybe I just attack with these. Maybe one of them. Still have four blockers. They have to block. They can I guess they can use these guys to jump block and then they have to block one more time. So they only lose one actual creature in the process in terms of dealing me damage. And then I have four blockers for these four guys. They pump here, pump this up. They, I guess they could jump here. But I have another jumper here as well. And I'm going to get a token there. I think I'm okay. I think, I think I'm okay like this. Yeah, yeah, they realize it. Yeah. It's just a pit, pretty, pretty tough spot. They needed me to make like some, some weird attack or whatever to, to get a chance there. Um, and they needed ossification. I mean, if they had an ossification, this game would have been... A lot easier for them, of course. But dinos can play the frillback. Pretty strong dino to handle enchantments and artifacts. Yeah, having the one drop that ramps you is just all the difference. Yeah, I'm not mulling in the sand, of course. It's just too good to do so, but it makes all the difference for sure. I think I'm just going to play my 2 free here. It would be nice to have a removal spell down the line in a way, but I do have my hand is stacked, so I'm just gonna throw it out there and then see from there. You know, just yeah, use my mana. Well, all right. This is kind of nice against, if you're playing against a black opponent, for example, and they keep up mana, you can then play this on turn three, right? And then they're like, hmm, I guess I want to use my mana, so boom, I kill it, but then I lose four damage. So I think this card is definitely not bad. And for example, now they keep up mana, I could play this to sort of make them use their mana. I kind of want to play the Raptor here and get in for a bunch. I could also play this guy. And then next turn play this and potentially that if I have another untapped land. That's red. Nah, just play the raptor. I mean, Frillback would be better here than this thing, that's for sure. I 
Do I do this and kill the free free? I think so. Um, do I attack with everything? Definitely attack with these two. I'm not sure if I want to trade here. If I attack with this, then double block here and then I take eight. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's probably fine to do it. Oh, they triple there. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. That five drop, the hatcher, it's a pretty risky card, honestly. Like, it is quite bad against a go for the Frodo and any instant speed remover. That's a good find. That's a pretty good find. Play the Carnosaur. Okie dokie. I guess we, we have been defeated here, likely. Opponent playing good cards. Want to play good cards? How can I win? I can't. Good cards are too good. Uh, yeah, I have to let Larry rule this out to be able to kill that. You hate to see it. And this just gets traded away by that. Yeah, if this would be a frill bag, my life would be better. I mean, at this point, how oh, dare they play good cards? Yeah, how oh, dare? They might even have one ring emperor. Yeah, I'm super dead. I'm super dead. I need the, the nexus, I guess. The nexus is quite good. Uh, this doesn't even make sense, does it? Oh yeah, but this is also nice against emperor because it sort of forces their issue. Yeah, they do have it. I would have done it pre combat yeah, I mean, I misplayed this turn, obviously. Yeah, I probably can concede here, pretty much. It's just too much power, too vetting announcement with a Virtue here. They're probably gonna play the Virtue and just totally kill me. GG. No trampling, either. So clunky, so expensive. That's that's the problem, like, you cannot allow yourself to have a hand that has too many 4-drops. You, you are an aggressive deck. This is just not playable. Yeah, that, that's like why I'm wondering, like we're already playing four five drops. Maybe this is just too too greedy. But I guess it is a free mana card as well, a pretty bad one at that, but maybe, maybe fine enough. Um, So it's between these two expensive cards, I guess. I think it's just this, yeah. Oh, drag, so it's a dragon. Let's see what you're saying, okay. But Invasion of Tarkir cares about dragons attacking. <gasps> no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, you can reveal it and deal more damage. Okay, 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 yeah. That is, that is definitely a thing. My point is to go for the throat. I'm going to be very sad. Be very, very sad. Okay, now go for the throat. We can have fun. <laughs> Okay. Curious too. I guess this is also a Rena Meta card. Oh yeah, it's definitely a Rena Meta card. <laughs> All right. Message received. I do have a kill next turn. Eight plus four. Okay, well, if I have a land, I definitely have a kill. Hmm. No land. Hmm. Can Charm put the free or. And play Nexus, I guess. Or play Raptor, Chomp here, go to six, go to five. Um. I think uh, I can't even chomp at that point when I do these two. 
But I could just do this as my soul play and then put him to free. Uh, I'd probably just play Raptor instead, though. Bit worse against the Sweeper. Yeah, whatever. Take a block here and go to one, actually. Which they will do. Nah, yeah, maybe this play was bad. Maybe I was supposed to just play Nexus. Play Nexus? No, that's not a good idea. I think I just played Chomp there. It's like the issue now is that <clears throat> if they kill like this, hey, I wouldn't even be able to kill them. And if I if I chomp there, I put them to free with two creatures on, in play. So even if they like, they have to handle this and the other guy, the trampling guy that comes out of nowhere that they don't even expect. Well, it looks like my opponent doesn't have the reanimation. Okay. Seems a bit slow that card. Not gonna lie. I assume this good game was just oh, that's lethal already. Oh. But I could have dealt more. I think the Raptor is certainly important when you're playing the Nexus to just have double strike there. Yeah, the Nexus, the Nexus is a very good card in this deck. Clearly, what do you do against Sunfall though? Like if we, if we, if we take this to another level. Like if we actually take this into the standard streets, like what do you do against Sunfall? You have to have Planeswalkers, vehicles. Sunfall is just absolute beating. As is go for the throat, to be fair. I haven't really faced any go for the throats. Like a go for the throat in the 6-6 would have slowed us down so much. All right, the lore keeper is back. Let's go. With lore keeper, everything works. Even this becomes a two drop, because you can—it's an ability of a dinosaur. Oh, but this is not the dracosaur. I guess the dracosaur is the five-five first strike flyer. Yeah, but I don't—I don't like that card. I think it's kind of bad, so I don't want to play that. The cat—the calendar again. It's the first time we have yielding. Yielding with uh, with the with the Nexus also tramples, so you you have eight tramplers in the deck, nine I guess. So I think I just attack four and keep up this. I don't know. Maybe I should have played that, but it just seems kind of mid. Unfortunately, Lore Keeper doesn't help cast in Nexus. Yeah, I don't know. If this would have been like some other cheaper dino, this draw would have been a lot better. You probably just cannot play too many expensive cards. Like, yeah. Iron Crack. Oh my gosh, this sucks. I can't play that. Ugh, terrible. Maybe I should have just played this last turn. I feel stupid for missing out on damage now because, like, yeah, I think I should have just played it last turn, honestly. Like, I'm playing against a calendar deck. Like, do I expect to, you know? This unfortunately cannot go face. I don't love this. I think I wouldn't play it in a dino deck. Maybe in the sideboard. But, nah. This is more of a reanimator card, maybe. You know, you kill a thing, discard it, and then you reanimate it into play. That's pretty powerful. I can see that. Haze could be part of the strategy against Sunfall. Yeah, it could. Which, yeah, I don't know if that's good enough, though. If you have some nice... You have a... Ooh. You have a new sweeper card. God damn it. The freaking tap land. Oh my god, I could kill myself right now. <laughs> It is quite the comeback play. I mean, this cover five is nice. 
if, if you don't hit the lore keeper like the, the, the discover five is one of those abilities where man the variance the variance is gonna hit you just like vitali Ooh. all right all right all right now we're talking I mean, they, they could have never done this if I would have just played this last turn. I mean, my draw was so awkward. Oh, wow. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're kind of sore, I'm talking about variants there. You could have hit, you could have hit a shock at sorcery speed there with the Carnosaur, right? I'm not stupid. Man, I'm five or less. And the, the first card we hit was that thing. I mean, are you kidding? Like, this could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> that was best possible. I mean, if you do that every time, that card is good. But no, I'm going to cut it. Um, so maybe I'm a bit going too hard on that front. And this card is also quite good, right? It's five damage. Um, for four mana, <clears throat> and it has to have an other attacking creature, but you know that's gonna be not not gonna be that difficult to achieve. Okay, that's a big boy. Can't attack or block quite yet, but I can exile the graveyard with the frill back, so that's gonna be big game. Yeah, I feel like this dino deck is really ridiculous if you can't kill its dinos. Like, if you're not interacting with it, it's it's quite strong. Okay, opponent has four four permanents already. Alright, that's a 1-1. One, one. Um, I could just exile the graveyard to kill this off. It's kind of funny. I feel like I want them to commit more, though. That's what I'm thinking right now. Hmm. How do I do this? Probably just play the firstborn. Firstborn is such a good card as well. Ay, 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 ay. I assume this is offline, online now, but I, I think my opponent will not attack next turn. Because, I don't know, if you're racing against my dino deck that might have more hasters, you probably can't. In which case, my, my exiling of the graveyard will be super, super strong. When does this flip? At the beginning of your upkeep, okay. Vetting invitation? Oh, can't be blocked. If it's a vampire, it also gains lifelink. Interesting. And they can sack it to sort of give. Yeah, I, I can see. I, I see what they. I see what they can do there. But I have a very bad news for my opponent. Very bad news. Green, green, please. This and that. Destroy here, exile your graveyard. And back to square one. Vetting invitation. Hmm. Sort of being making it a combo deck in a way. Yeah, that's interesting. But well, it doesn't gain lifelink, does it? I mean, you're just, you're just cracking these for fun. Nice. Good game. Yeah, Dino, Dino seems to be... I think Dino is the most successful deck I've played so far in early access. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, squirming emergence, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
All right. Dinos is is good. The dinos are brought in. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh, yielding, you say? The opponent has the lore keeper. But hey, even if they have the, the hammer skull, I can attack here. They do have the hammer skull. Oh, I need to draw lands pretty badly. Swing. Are oh, you trade? Wow, nice. Has another hammer skull? Oh, it has a paleontologist. Okay. Another lore keeper. Okay. Oh, that was an important draw step. Would be a land. I mean, at least we drew something to cast. So. The Hatcher. Yep. Hopefully I draw a land to kill off that Hatcher. Yeah, that's pretty good. No attacks. Ugh. Yeah, at least I draw that, I guess. I mean, that that's like the best card to draw outside of land, maybe. I guess drawing the shock would have been pretty good there. Really? I think they just have that shock, right? Or, or a Gishad. Like, I call that thing Gishad, but it's, it's Quint. Whatever. Probably have that or the Shark in hand, and they wanted me to, you know, block so they can kill it. But I won't do that. They can exile that, but it only works on their own dinos. Now they're gonna reread their card and learn. <laughs> yeah. It only works in your own dinos. So you could have exiled that thing and actually played it, which is super good. Oof. That would have been really, really good. Ugh. Well, I guess we attack above. And yeah, the paleontologist, paleontologist is looking pretty nice here. Pun's going to one. Wow. Going to one, yeah. All right. I think I'm not playing that. That was the worst tap land ever. So now they just return a, a hammer skull. Yeah, this card looks kind of good. Maybe I should play more of that. Yeah, that's super good. And now they have a chomp. Yikes. You attack with that too, right? Why, why wouldn't you attack with that? I guess you, you're scared of two hasters. Yeah, I'm bad. GG. All right, dinos defeated by dinos. Making your land drops is as important as ever, especially in a mirror match situation. Very impressive paleontologist. Should probably play more of that. All right, I think with that though, we can move on to the next deck.